header, today we will have a look at how to get the output data from a phantom via an API call. So for this, the first step will be to go on your phantom booster account and head to your API keys. We will create a new API key that you will need to launch your API call. You'll click on add API key here and then copy the API key. So in my example, I will use N810 to launch the API call, but you could use Postman, Make.com or Zapier, or even host it yourself and launch the API call through your application. So on N810, I will create a new workflow. And then as an action, I will search for HTTP request. You can see here, I can just paste the endpoint of my API and launch an API call. So I will go on the API documentation of Phantom Booster and search for the endpoints that will allow me to get the output data of a Phantom. So in this case, it will be on agents, agent fetch output. It's that endpoint. I will copy the endpoint and paste it on URL. After this endpoint, I need to add the ID of my phantom. The ID of the phantom, I want to retrieve the results. So I have to add a question mark and then the ID. For this, I will go back on my phantom booster account. I will search for the right phantom. Let's say this one. Copy the ID of the phantom. Get back to N18. So I will need to add the ID after the question mark. I'll need to type ID equals and paste my ID. Then I need to select send headers and to indicate my API key. I have to write X phantom booster key and on the value I can paste my API key. Let's try to launch this API call and see what we get. Okay, so you can see it's working. I'm getting the container ID, the status, and the most important, the output of my phantom. If we scroll down, you can see that you will get a CSV URL and a JSON URL that you can then parse to get the data. We will see that together. It's already a good step because we are getting the output data of the phantom. But what we want now is to have an access to these data. So for this, we would like to have an access to the CSV URL or the JSON URL. In this example, we'll try to access the CSV URL and then to launch another HTTP request to read the data inside the CSV. So as a second step, I will select code and I will need to run a bit of code to isolate the CSV URL of my output data. I already prepared it before this video and I will paste it in the description of the video so you can easily copy paste it. To explain quickly what I do with this code, I'm trying first to create a variable with the output key here. So I will get uh, what I have here, this text that's containing the CSV URL and the JSON URL. Then I'm trying to match what I have here, the HTTPS phantom booster dot JSON link, this is a regex expression. So I'm trying to match this regex expression to the content of my variable. So then I will output what looks like this expression. So the URL of my JSON. So I will click on execute step. And you can see that as an output, I'm getting the JSON URL. As a last step, I will create another HTTP request and I will make a call on this JSON URL. So then I will be able to have an access to the data of my phantom. So I will select get method and on URL, I will select my JSON link that I got just before. Nothing more. That's quite simple. I will click execute step. And then you will see that I'm getting all the data I needed from my leads. If I scroll down, you will see that I'm getting all the data from all the leads. So this is exactly what I needed. 
from a simple API call with the endpoint fetch output, I was able to fetch the output data of my phantom and then to access this data. I guess that later on, if you need to access this data, you want to send it to your CRM or to a spreadsheet, for example. That will be quite easy if you are using NA10 or make.com or Zapier. You will just need to add another action and then to select your CRM or spreadsheet to select the output data from the second HTTP request and to send the data correctly to your application. For this, you will just need to map the correct fields and then the data will be sent automatically. So I hope this video was useful. I know that it was maybe a technical, but I guess that if you are trying to fetch data from an API call, you also know a bit the basics of these tools and automations. In any case, feel free to ask all your questions on the comments of this video or to reach out to me directly on the Phantom Buster community. Thank you for listening and see you on the next video.